physical quantities and measurement measurement of length importance of measurement we often ask very common questions like what is the length of this room how long are you waiting what is your age etc study of physics is based on measurement in physics we usually learn how to measure quantities that are involved in it among these quantities some are length mass time temperature pressure and electric current anything which is measurable is called a physical quantity we measure each physical quantity in its own units by comparing it with a standard without measurement we cannot make the correct judgment about length area volume etc an arbitrary estimate gives us a wrong information about the dimensions of an object example 1 two lines xp and yq are given below look at the two straight lines xp and yq drawn alongside which of them is longer you may guess that yq appears to be shorter than xp but when you measure with the help of a ruler you find that both the lines are equal in length thus we can say that in this case length is the basic measurement and ruler is the tool needed to measure the length fact in ancient egypt water clocks were used to measure time a container is filled with water and the water is drained slowly the amount of water dripping from one bowl filled with water to another marked the time passed example 2 two. two glasses containing milk are given below in the above figure two glasses contain milk it is difficult to guess which glass contains more milk we can only tell it with the help of measurement some other examples one a vegetable vendor sells vegetables fruits etc by measuring their mass two a carpenter measures the length and breadth of the wood before giving it the shape of a door think what will happen if he does it without proper measurement three you take the help of a clock to read school on time four a doctor checks the fever of the patient by measuring the body temperature five a milkman measures the quantity volume of milk before selling it from the above examples we see that measurement is an integral part of our daily life in this chapter we will learn to measure length mass time and temperature need for accurate measurement to know the correct mass volume and length of an object we must measure these physical quantities accurately we purchase milk by volume cloth by length floor tiles by area timber wood by volume and fruits and vegetables by mass in the same way each and every component of a machine should have high degree of accuracy of measurement what would happen if each part of a machine has its own standard of measurement components of a machine are manufactured at different places if each component is different in measurement there will be a difficulty in assembling the machine to remove all such difficulties measurements are controlled very accurately the water tap you bring from the market fits into any pipe of its measurement this could not have been possible without a control on the accuracy of measurements expensive metals like gold silver and platinum are weighed extremely accurately often errors occur while measuring hence various methods are used to minimize and correct the errors more the number of observations less will be the possibility of errors the error in measurement inside a laboratory can be minimized by taking average of measurements the average can be given as average is equal to sum of observations divided by number of observations thus 
measurement can be defined as the comparison of an unknown quantity with a known standard quantity approximation in measurement in our daily life sometimes we need only approximate near to accurate measurement the approximate estimation is a quicker judgment about any measurement examples 1 we add salt in vegetables by a quick judgment or approximation 2 painter paints the wall by mixing an approximate quantity of water 3 we add sugar in a glass of milk by an approximate estimation hence we can say that approximation is the rough idea about the measurement of a physical quantity they are not accurate measurements but quite near to the correct measurements units of measurement measurement requires the comparison of an unknown quantity with some known fixed quantity of the same kind this known fixed quantity is called the unit each and every measurement consists of two parts one a number called numerical value two a symbol or alphabet that denotes the unit associated with it examples one when we say quantity of tomato is 5 kg then 5 is the numerical value and kilogram is the unit of mass two if the amount of milk is 4 liter then 4 is the numerical value and liter is the unit of volume nowadays to measure the length we use the unit meter in ancient times the length was measured by comparing it with the length of the body parts a cubit was the unit of length one cubit was the length between tip of the fingers and the elbow similarly a hand span was the length from the tip of the thumb to the tip of the little finger these methods were inaccurate because the size of fingers differ from person to person in the same way one cannot use a glass to measure the exact volume of the liquid such a system of measurement was not correct to express the measurement we should know 1 a unit in which the quantity is measured 2 the magnitude of the numerical value associated with it activity to measure the length using hand span use your hand span to measure the length of the table now ask your friend to use his hand span to measure the length you will notice that there is a difference between the two measurements therefore for reliable and accurate measurement we need the standard units of measurement standard unit to overcome variations in the measurement the need of a system of standard units was felt a unit which is acceptable by a majority of people as a basic unit of measurement is called standard unit the internationally accepted system of units is called SI standard international units this system of units was adopted in october 1960 in 12th international general conference on weights and measures it was agreed that the unit of physical quantity should have following characteristics 1 the unit should have a convenient size 2 its value should not change with respect to place and time 3 the system of units should be acceptable everywhere 4 it should be well defined fundamental units of si system the fundamental units do not depend on any other units they have their own values the si system has seven fundamental units which are given below table the base quantities of the si system of units quantity unit symbol length meter m mass kilogram kg time second s electric current ampere a temperature kelvin 
K. Luminous intensity, candela, CD. Amount of a substance, mol, MOL. In our country, National Physical Laboratory, NPL, situated in New Delhi is authorized to maintain the national standards for all the basic units in India. Multiples of units. Multiples are the factors used to create larger forms of units. For measuring long distances of length, meter and centimeter are not convenient. For example, the distance between Delhi and Lucknow is approximately 5 lakh meters which is inconvenient to use. The easy way to say this is, the distance between Lucknow to Delhi is 500 kilometers. Here, kilo means thousand, 1000 meter is equal to 1 kilometer. The higher units are called multiples of units. Multiples are the factors used to create larger forms of units. Submultiples of units. Submultiples are the factors used to create the smaller forms of units. Sometimes we have to measure smaller lengths, then we use submultiples of units. For example, if we want to measure the length of a small wire, we measure in centimeters or millimeters. These are submultiples of units. One meter is equal to 100 centimeters. 1 meter is equal to 1000 millimeters. 1 centimeter is equal to 10 millimeter. Fact The size of molecules is measured in small units like micron or angstrom. 1 micron is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 6 meters. 1 angstrom is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 10 meters. Table Multiples and submultiples of units factors, prefixes and symbols. Factor, prefix, symbol of prefix. 1000, kilo, k. 100, hecto, h. 10, deca, dam. 1, meter, m. 0 0.1, 1 by 10, deci, dm. 0 0.01 1 by 100 centi c 0 0.001 1 by 1000 milli m 0 0.000001 1 upon 10 lakh micro derived units the units which are obtained with the help of the fundamental units are called derived units. They strictly depend on the fundamental units. The derived units are formed by the combination of one or more fundamental units. Volume is equal to length into breadth into height is equal to meter into meter into meter is equal to meter cube. Speed is equal to distance in meters divided by time in seconds is equal to meter per second. Direct measurement of length. To measure the length, we need some measuring devices. For example, a measuring tape is used by a tailor. A metallic meter rod is used by a cloth merchant. A scale is used by you to measure the length of lines and figures and to draw lines of the given lengths. Normally, we use a meter scale or half meter scale for measuring the length. The scale is calibrated in centimeters and millimeters. Suppose we want to measure the length of a rod. The zero mark on the scale is set to coincide with one end of the rod as shown in the figure. The reading on the other end gives the length of the rod. Activity To measure the length of a line. Place a scale along the line AB such that zero on the scale coincides with point A. Note down the reading on the scale which coincides with point B. This reading gives you length of the line AB. To make accurate measurement, 
we require a proper measuring device. The choice of the measuring device depends upon the following. 1. The size of the object to be measured. 2. The shape of the object to be measured. 3. The degree of accuracy required. Vernier calipers and screw gauze are two such instruments which are used to measure very small lengths accurately such as the diameter of an electric wire. Indirect methods of measurement of length A ruler cannot be used to measure the circumference of a cylinder because the circumference is a curved surface and a ruler is a straight rigid object. Therefore, we cannot bend the ruler around a curved object. When the measurement cannot be measured directly, we use indirect method of measurement. For this, the measurement system has to be modified. Let us perform the following activities to understand how we can measure the length using indirect methods. Activity To measure the diameter of a circular or spherical object. Take a metal spherical ball and two wooden blocks. Place the spherical ball between two blocks. Mark the point of contact of sphere with the blocks. Using a ruler, measure the distance between the inner faces of the two blocks which are in contact with the sphere. If the ruler is placed and shown in the figure, the difference between the two readings on the ruler gives the diameter of the sphere. Activity To measure the length of a curved line Take a thread and tie a knot on its one end. To measure the length of a given curved line, place the knot of the thread at one end of the line. Now, move the thread along the length of the curved line carefully. Hold the thread at small distances between your thumb and first finger. Continue in this manner till you reach the other end of the curved line. Using a ball pen, put a mark on the thread where it just touches the last point on the line. Now, stretch the thread along a meter scale and measure the length from the knot to the ink mark. The length of this portion is the length of the given curved line. Activity To measure the thickness of a coin Take some identical coins, say 20 to 25 in number, and place them one over the other. All these coins will make a cylindrical column. The height of this stack of coins can easily be measured by a ruler placed vertically against it. To find the thickness of a single coin, divide the total thickness by the number of the coins. So, thickness of a coin is equal to total thickness divided by number of coins.